The Trojan War. The tale of the Trojan War. One of the greatest military showdowns of all time. And let me tell you, there's enough drama, betrayal, and witty banter to make even Zeus himself crack a smile. It all started when Paris, a prince of Troy, found himself smitten with the beautiful Helen wife of the Spartan king Menelaus. You know how they say love is blind? Well, Paris must have been completely blind since he kidnapped the woman and set the wheels of war in motion. Thinking sorry would do the trick. Menelaus called on all of his Greek pals for a rescue mission. And let me tell you, it was quite the lineup you had courageous warriors, crafty spies, and even a few bards to sing some epic battle ballads. At the center of this, all was a guy named Achilles, who was pretty much the Michael Jordan of Greek warriors. The dude was so jacked and skilled, it's no wonder even the gods were scared of him. Or maybe it was just his funky smelling sweat, who knows? On the Trojan side of things, we had the noble prince Hector, who fought valiantly to defend his homeland. Sure, he wasn't as muscle-bound as Achilles, but he had a heart of gold. And you know what they say, the bigger they are, the easier they are to topple. Athena probably told him that. Oh, and let's not forget about Odysseus, the wise-cracking master strategist who was always whipping up cunning plans to defeat the enemy. Bless his soul. He was so sarcastic that maybe if he'd been born in modern times, he'd be a stand-up comedian. Finally, after 10 years of intense fighting and epic clashes, a genius idea was born. And let me tell you, it was a doozy. The Greeks decided to construct a giant wooden horse, big enough to fit tons of soldiers inside. They then pretended to retreat, leaving the horse behind as a gift to the Trojans. That's right, they spent 10 years in battle, but decided to win through the power of pretending to be leaving. You know the saying, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again definitely didn't apply here. The Trojans thought they'd won the war and brought their giant horse inside the safety of their walls. But little did they know, there were more warriors inside that horse than you could poke a stick at. And as soon as night fell, the Greeks emerged, opened the gates, and Troy fell like a stack of Ozo bottles. It was one of the biggest pranks in history, a real Trojan horse. So, there you have it, folks. The Trojan War, a tale of love, betrayal, cunning, bravery, and really, really big horses, the Odyssey. So, after that whole Trojan War shenanigans, Odysseus was all like, all right, time to head home. Little did he know that the gods had a twisted sense of humor and were determined to give him the most epic obstacle course imaginable. First up, we have the seductive sirens who sang like Taylor Swift on a caffeine high. These alluring creatures were a real danger to any sailor passing by. And trust me, these guys were more distracted than a goldfish in a disco. But Odysseus, being the savvy guy he was, had a brilliant plan. He tied himself to the mast of his ship and plugged the ears of his crew with beeswax. He got a free concert without the risk of turning into seagull food. Talk about multitasking. Then came the big, bad boss, Polyphemus, a cyclops with a very bad eyesight and even worse table manners. Picture Shriek on a steroid binge. Odysseus, ever the sly one, managed to trick old Polyphemus by telling him that his name was Nobody. Yeah, you heard that right. Nobody. So when Odysseus' crew poked out the Cyclops' eye with a red-hot skewer, all the Cyclops could shout was, Nobody is hurting me. It's like a boring argument between your parents. No one believes you. But hold on, folks, because we're not done yet. 
After escaping the Cyclops, our hero ran into the enchanting witch Circe, who was basically the alchemist of ancient Greece. She had this nifty trick of turning people into pigs. Yeah, you heard me right, pigs. But Odysseus, being the charmer he was, managed to resist her magic and actually convinced her to turn his crew back into humans. Not bad, eh? But wait, there's more. Odysseus sailed his ship through rocky waters, endured divine tantrums, and dodged more obstacles than your average gold medal winning gymnast. It took him a grand total of 10 years to find his way back home to Ithaca. Talk about a guy who was really dedicated to a long distance relationship. And lo and behold, after countless adventures, near death experiences, and more plot twists than a soap opera, Odysseus finally set foot on his homeland. He was probably greeted by a marching band and a confetti cannon, right? Wrong. You see, his wife Penelope had been loyal and waiting for him all these years. But she couldn't just let him waltz back in like he'd been at a community potluck. There were suitors vying for her hand, and she needed proof that the man claiming to be her husband was... Well, actually, her husband. Cue the disguise, the tests, and some seriously strained family relations. So, it's a tale of adventure, resilience, and the lengths one man would go to be reunited with his true love. Plus, it's got enough twists and turns to rival a roller coaster. Remember, life may throw you mythical creatures, gods with anger management issues, and countless pranks, but with a bit of wit, cunning, and maybe a disguise or two, you too can navigate your way back home 